Welcome to In Our Community. I'm Suzanne Barnett, your host, and I'm welcoming, welcoming people who've seen our first show to this show. And uh, I'm so excited to even be able to continue from the first show because I have such a fabulous guest. I have Candy Yu who is a versatile, fantastic, unbelievable watercolor artist. You are. And I would like to introduce you again to Candy Yu. Candy, how'd you like that first show? Um, pretty good. <laughs> this is my first interview, so. <laughs> I know, I know. But just, we, we just need to uh, review just a little bit okay. about the fact that you were born in Taiwan. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you were a computer soft, you no, know, a software engineer. Yes. That had something really bad happen, mm -hmm. and then you are now the most, and I'm not exaggerating, fabulous watercolorist. Thank you. Now I really mean that. So you talk now. You tell about what happened to your arm. Um, I was a software engineer working in the industry. Um, uh, since 1992 and because I I'm kind of at, at the time I was kind of a perfectionist I want everything to be perfect so I always work uh, without rest so in the morning I went into the company and I get a cup of water and start working and at the noon time I couldn't stop because you know so much work in my group, we, I was the only software engineer. The others are all hardware engineers. So I have to write all the software. And uh, at noon time, I, I was still working and then didn't even you know, take a sip of my water. So after a long, long time, I started hurting my uh, arms because of using the mouse. So because of that injury, so uh, my daughter, when my daughter was using computer, I limited her to you know, 30 minutes every day. She really do not, does not like that, didn't like that. But you know, she has to abide by my rules because she has seen my injury. She knows, she knew that I was suffering from that injury. So how long did it take you to get over it so that you could paint? Um, I left the company in 1998, and I recuperated for for about a year, and I feel a I feel a little better. So I went to the community center to take a watercolor class with my watercolor teacher, Linda Seeker. She was a she is a great one. She taught me how to paint watercolor, how to mat a painting, how to frame a painting too because you know, matting and framing in here is very expensive. And she taught me everything. So I can do a painting myself and mat it and frame it and, and do delivery. Everything. And right. you've been in jury shows, in, in art shows. Yes, I yeah. do. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the fact that your passion is, is watercolor and painting, but you are so versatile. The fact that you can paint anything. You can do portraits, you can do animals, you can do landscapes. How do you do all that? I just try my best. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, in order to, well, I can't form this question very well, but in order to really be uh, as, as talented a painter as you are. Do you think anybody could do that? I, I think, you know, through practice, a lot of practice, you can do better. Be it's, better. Right. Some people are, more, are better in doing landscape. Some are better in doing flowers. Yeah. Some are you know, better in doing uh, animal portraits. I think I, I like animal portraits too, and I bet and I better in that area. Is that your favorite? Yes. It is. It yeah, is. when I look at the cute animals, I just have the urge, I have to paint it. And the other thing is, I understand you have your own studio. Yes. Tell about that. Okay. 
before I was before I the studio, uh, I was painting in a small bedroom, and because I started to learn uh, how to mat and frame, so I had to buy a lot of equipment, mm -hmm. and then fill that small bedroom. So I have my, all my stuff, art stuff, everywhere in the house. It's very inconvenient for me. So I asked my husband, you know, maybe we should build an art room. And uh, he, at first, he was not, uh, he did not say yes. He just said, oh, maybe we'll move back to Taiwan. And then I, I told him, OK, if you want to move back to Taiwan, you go back there and live three months. And it, if you, when you can come back and you say you want to move back, I'll move back with you. So one year he tried in 2016. He uh, went back for three months and he came back, told me, you can build a studio now. <laughs> so we had a build uh, in 2016 and a finish in uh, November. And I have a huge 477 square feet uh, art room. I have tables for painting, one for matting, cutting the mats, yes. and one for sewing, one for jewelry making, and one another one for putting all the stuff there. <laughs> but you know something, you are, you know, I had met you before today, and I didn't realize, I thought you were just a watercolorist. But here you make your jewelry and your sewing. What do you do with all that? Uh, it's just for fun. I like yeah. doing those, you know. Yeah. I do not think about, like, you know, painting, I do not think about selling or anything like that. I just enjoy doing it. I have a lot of sense of accomplish and also uh, it's a, ther a kind of ther therapy to me, you know, for my pain. And how bad is your pain? Say from one to ten. Mm, now, now it's about five. So it's always there. Always there, yeah. Well, how does that work? How do you manage that with your painting? Because watercolor is kind of light. I see. Uh, so I, at beginning, I believe I can handle that better than other medium. But also, when I see watercolor, I have the urge. You know, I feel like I have the desire to do it. But uh, when I see the other medium, I do not feel like I want to do it. Mm -hmm. I can appreciate it, but mm -hmm. I do not feel like, personally, mm -hmm. I have to do it. I wanted to do it. And last time we talked about what inspires you and who has inspired you. Okay, uh, besides my first, uh, my elementary school teacher, uh, and also my uh, art teacher in America, Linda, I have another one, a Fremont artist called, her, his name is Hal Booth, he inspires me. He, though he already passed away, I think of him really often. And he gave me some of his first uh, ver first draft of paintings, uh, some uh, folders. I have that one. I sometimes I page through and look at him, look at that, and I think of him. He taught me how to do the leaves by spattering, and I use that pretty often. Spattering. Mm -hmm with a brush and spat, oh. yeah. Do you ever, on cha I think it's Channel 9, those men that paint, do you ever watch that? I do not, but I see a lot of online classes. Yeah, uh, okay. Online. And all they have to do is do something with their brush and it looks like a tree or something. Yeah, Tom Lynch do, does a lot of uh, spattering with tree yeah. leaves. I yeah. believe Tom Lynch is the mentor of uh, Hell Booth. So what would you call your style of painting? I do not, I don't think I have a style, I never thought of that, I just... Kind of, it's, it's impressionistic, but there's such a realism yeah, to more, it too. Yeah, more realism, yeah. Yeah, I would say more realism. Mm -hmm. I have one, one more inspiration is my father-in-law. He is uh, 96 years old this year. Yes. And he still does a lot of art, like you know, uh, painting, especially calligraphy, Chinese calligraphy. He's still writing calligraphy, and he really inspired me. I was thinking I will continue to paint as I get older. Yeah, he art uh, makes him very centered and also very uh, peaceful. And he 
He's always very pleasant to be with. And he's 96. And he's still working. And he's still working. Yeah, he's a lawyer, an attorney. Is that right? Yeah, he has his own firm. So that goes to show that if we can keep doing, I mean, I guess people have to retire, but sometimes it's a big, a big huge mistake because if you can keep doing what you love to do, I really do think that it probably enlarges one's life, mm -hmm. if they're lucky. No, mm -hmm. really, I do believe if that. If you really enjoy your work or your yes. job, don't retire. Don't retire, <laughs> don't stop doing it. Unless you have something, some good hobby that you really enjoy doing. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, retire, after retire, you don't know what to do. It's really, some people get uh, depressed and it's not good. That's right, absolutely. So what would you uh, suggest to people who, whatever age, and they have the desire to start painting, how would they go about that? Uh, if they just started? Yeah. Just like um, bring, bring a sketch pad or a journal with you all the time, either with a pencil or a permanent marker or permanent ink pen. You just do whatever you can, you know. Don't compare with others. Compare with yourself. The more you practice, you know, they say pe practice makes perfect. The more you practice, you will see the improvement every day. Just practice every day whenever you can. Okay, well, I'm going to uh, <clears throat> I'm going to look at this for a second. Oh, this is a good question. Are certain places, times of the year, or events, do you find those inspirational, like Christmas, Halloween, mm, okay. Mother's Day, even though you're from Taiwan? Uh, okay. Um, like in spring? Yeah. I love spring. I love to paint the iris in spring. We have a one uh, uh, iris garden called Nola's Iris Garden on the Sierra Road. In the spring, the, she has so many different kinds and different colors of iris. And uh, we ever had one show there. And I started going there you know, in, the, in the winter, and uh, in the spring, to paint iris. Sometimes, most of the time, we just there, you know, on location, painted it there. And in the summer, I remember one summer, I went with my art teacher to Santa Cruz. And we walk around the blocks there. I believe it's around 41st Street near Capitola. And we saw one house with really, really tall uh, sunflowers, like maybe two story high. And I was standing in there, and then uh, my teacher took a picture of me there. I looked like I know. Dove. <laughs> but you know, I took uh, about 30, 35 pictures of the sunflowers. I came back and then shared with my, my friend and my teacher. I painted three from the uh, photo. And I really enjoyed that. Because I was there and I took the picture, I know yeah. what I want. Yeah. Sometimes I combine different pictures to paint one painting. Yeah. So one of your techniques is to take a picture right. of. I didn't realize that. When I paint in the studio, usually yeah. I use pictures, I photos. See. Yeah. When I go uh, outside to paint, I join a group called Plan the Plain Air Group yeah. with Santa Clara Valley Watercolor Society yes. every Thursday. They have another group uh, on weekends. And, but I, on weekends, I, I sing chorus. Oh, that's right. You're a singer, so, yeah. too. So on Thursday, I, went out, I go out with them, mostly. And we will go to different places. And just do whatever you want. And at the end, everybody will take out their whatever they finished today, and people will just you know, take pictures or kind of critique like that. And I learned a lot from looking at other people's uh, painting. You will see, oh, with that uh, just a uh, fence and the flower there, you can paint that just like that, and it's so beautiful. So I learned from there that simple things can be beautiful. You don't have to take in everything, just something that uh, make you excited or you think it's beautiful that you can just paint this small thing. And that's very good advice, right? Yeah, I think it so. It really is instead of 
it's, it's too overwhelming sometimes to think that you have to do Everything. something, you know, a lot of stuff. But just to be very simple about it, that's very good advice. <laughs> it really is. But I think the, the main thing that I feel about you, and that's why I love to interview people like you, Candy, is that you're, there's something different about artists. There's some kind of, I don't know, it's just different. It, that's just my opinion, I could be wrong. But I think the biggest thing, that, or the most important thing that I have learned is that whatever you do, to, you need to be passionate. I wish there was another uh, adjective, because I use the word passionate. But what does passionate mean to you? Uh, to me, without the passion, yeah. then you cannot continue. You just have to have the passion to go on. That's a good definition. And every day you see different stuff, you practice different stuff, uh, uh, you practice in different subjects, and they inspire you, and they will keep you going. Do you ever get uh, what they call a block? You know, where all of a sudden you feel like, I don't think I want to paint right now. Yes, uh, I do. Do you? Yes, I do. What is that like for you? Okay, um, let me think. A couple of weeks ago, I went with the plein air group to Fremont, the Nile area, the train museum. And I was painting, a, I sketched one uh, train there. It was a, in exhibit uh, on a, my sketch pad and I finished coloring it. And I turned around and I looked for something else to do. So I took out my watercolor paper and the pad. And I, I looked at, there was a big tree, huge tree and there's another flag on the right. And I was thinking, hmm, I should paint the big tree because it looks so beautiful, and with the fence around it. So I just uh, lightly sketched it and I started painting the tree first. And, and in the middle, I was thinking, oh my God, I don't think I can do a good painting, you know. It will be a, it will be a bad one in my mind. Then I was struggling, should I just throw it away, or can I, just, you know, start another one. But I was thinking if I do that every time, then I will be wasting a lot of paper, right? Maybe, you know, at the end, if I continue persistent, I can finish it, and if I don't like it, I can turn it around uh, to the, the other side to paint it. Uh, if that doesn't work, then I just or and paint it again. <laughs> anyway, I, I was struggling in my mind for some time, and then last I said, oh, okay, just forget about it, just, just do it. So I continued painting it. And at that time, because I don't care. Because I think, oh, whatever it comes, you will, just yeah. whatever the result is. Yeah. So because I don't care, and then I feel so free and uh, very bold. And at the end, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> so I will say, never give up an, on any painting. So just continue. Just continue. It sounds to me like you're such a perfectionist that Hello, as they <laughs> say. So it has to be, in your mind, the very best you can do. It has to be perfect. Yeah. Why? Why is that? I think that's because of my personality. But now I will tell my daughter, do your best, but don't ask for perfection. <laughs> so boy, did you learn from that. Yeah, from my injury. Yeah, but I mean, how, how difficult it must be to, to want to be so perfect. How difficult? It's pretty. You no, know, it's difficult. It but is. But you told your da daughter, just do the best you can. I always tell my daughter that uh, when you want to do something, always do your best. If you don't want to do it, don't do it at all. Oh. Otherwise, do it the best. Okay. But is that putting a lot of pressure on her, do you think? Uh, she Probably. So now I'll tell her not, not to push yourself too much. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That was a very important lesson, really. Um, I was going to ask you something else about, um, well, I, wanna, I do want to tell our viewers that 
You have been in many juried shows and you've gotten the, the best artist of the year. Could you tell us about that? Uh, that was um, for East Valley artists. Yeah. That I remember I said last time that uh, every month we have a competition. You bring whatever you have. Our, my club have, uh, it, we have all the colorists. We have lots of oil, painter, pastel, collage, mixed media, all kinds, and 3D too. Yeah. So we, you can bring whatever you, you have to uh, compete. We have to have at least five pieces to compete. So we have first, second, and third. And everyone gets a point, like first maybe, maybe getting three points, yeah. second get two points, and then third get one point. At the end of the year, uh, whoever gets the hardest becomes the artist of the year. And I always, I want to join the competition because they will inspire me to paint more, yeah. to practice more. Yes. So every month, whenever I can, or when I'm here, not in Taiwan, then I will do the competition. Well, I'm going to have you on my show, which is Suzanne's studio, and we are going to have some paintings on that show. That's all I can say. Because I want our viewers to see those paintings. But they can also go to your uh, web page. Mm -hmm. So it would be Sandy, um, Candy, C A N D Y U Y U. Uh, can I say? Sure. Okay. If you Google uh, Candy U, yeah. C A N D Y Y U artist, you will see my painting on fineartamerica.com. That's, yeah, because I, I didn't know anything about you, you know, which is really uh, inspiring for me, Ch not inspiring, challenging, not to know the person so that I can, you know, have to get a sense of that person. But then, when I went on your web page, I thought, oh my God, I've never seen paintings like this, really. Oh, thank you. So I was a little worried about what is this woman going to be like in here. <laughs> you are so nice, and to to have such to have so many talents. I I really I'm so I'm really so honored thank to you. to uh, interview you. I really am, and again. So uh, we're just about to end our show. Uh, would you like to say anything in particular? Okay. Um, I have three shows currently ongoing. Uh, one in Martin Luther uh, Library, Martin Luther King Library, uh, until end of August. I have five uh, pets uh, painting there, watercolor with a group of uh, Chinese American Art Association. We have 20 some people, some artists there showing. And, and where is that located? It's on um, 4th and uh, 4th Street and San Fernando in San Jose. In San Jose, okay, right. okay. yeah. And then another one in Berriasa Community Center uh, near wherever they, wh with, where they have the meal uh, on the wall. I have uh, seven, around seven paintings there, all kinds. I have flowers, steel, life, uh, landscape, uh, animals there. And another show is in VCA Crocker Animal Hospital in San Jose on Jackson Street next to uh, Independence High School. I have 11 paintings there, and we have five or six artists have painting there, totally about 23 paintings. Well, this is very important information. We didn't say that on the first show. So I, I'm hoping, Jim, that we can show the second show maybe first. We'll see. We have such a wonderful camera person, an Irish fellow, Jim... Ducey. Ducey, D-U-C-E-Y. You know, I'm not that young anymore, so you have to forgive my uh, memory. Whew, thank God I thought of that word. Anyway, um, I do want to thank you so much, Candy, and I'm going to look forward to seeing you on 
Suzanne studio. Okay. okay. Thank you so much, too. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Jim. And of course, I want to thank KMVT. But here is something that I say every single time I do a show. And somehow it's really from my heart, okay? I can get rid of my acting <laughs> desire. <laughs> okay, I say this to my viewers. I can't wait to see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.